Hi. Today I'd like to talk about why we must resolve the polarization in our democracy. This is an imperative for us to get back to a more normal condition of our democracy. Can our democracy survive? Our capitalistic democracy needs to be governed by both the left and the right, not by one party. A capitalist democracy will only thrive if businesses and the people can coexist in harmony. We must balance the money going into businesses and the money going into to the people's prosperity to maintain that harmony. And I kind of call this the using money to titrate to a better democracy. The right and the left must stop being obstructionists whenever they are the minority party. Did you know that the 2017 Taxation Reduction Act decreased the tax on businesses and the super rich are those running those businesses by 12 percent or about two trillion dollars over four years. How did I come to this number? Well I looked at business profit which I said as part of the gross national product the GNP uh, that I, I'm just making an assumption here that's about 20 percent or about $22 trillion in the last normal year we've had, which was 2019. Average federal tax was 35%. Now it's 23%. That's a 12% decrease in the money uh, that both the federal government was able to get and what we've handed over to businesses and the rich that run those businesses. Basically the money was removed from the federal budget that supports everyone and added to the pockets of the businesses and the super rich that run those businesses. Democrats are trying to balance, are simply trying to balance the amounts given to businesses and to the people uh, to maintain harmony. I've talked in the past about democracy being a spectrum, a range, from socialism on the left to fascism on the right. You may disagree with that concept, but that's what I feel. I believe the only way to make our nation great again is by more and better education for all. So let's get that as the bottom line scenario here. We must stop the hate campaigns fostered by social medias getting more views by running hate campaigns and by allowing those running hate campaigns to be viewed on social media. What can extreme polarization do to our democracy? Well, if the people get the money and the socialist left gets the majority of votes, then socialism will prevail and our democracy will be lost. But if businesses get the money and the conservative right gets the majority of votes, then fascist regime will prevail and our democracy will be lost. The people lose either way. The only way to stay in a middle ground is that both parties need to govern, not to be obstructionists when they're the minority party. My point here is for democracy to thrive, both the left and the right must participate in governing our country. When one party has lost that advantage, they must still negotiate and participate in governing. They can't just say, oh, let the other party increase our uh, national debt limits. They must 
contribute there. They were part of the last controlling party that that raised the debt seat, that raised the debt of our nation. They need to accept that fact and still govern and say yes, we can raise the debt limit. So what's the sinister plots that I've seen in the last year? Well, cast doubt on our electoral form of government by claiming election fraud. Claim for or plan for and execute a democracy takeover like we saw on January 6th. Use fraud claims to enact state laws to suppress those from voting who do not agree with your point of view. Continue electoral college gerrymandering rather than uh, letting the popular vote uh, dictate which party will be the controlling party for the next four to eight years. Enacting anti-abortion laws forcing the poor into a slave class that the that some businesses feel they need to survive and or or using the wink wink nod nod control of your party so our justice system can't prosecute sinister party leaders and throw them in jail one of the things i've talked about here is slave class, and I want to enumerate on that a little bit. What is the definition of a slave class? Well, to me, we know what it was during the rule of Egypt. It was a true slave class, and we know what it was before 1860. It was a true slave class of blacks. But today, a slave class to me is defined by those making $7.25 to $20 minimum wage without benefits. And this depends on the location. If you're on the east or west coast, you're closer to $20, uh, to $20 with no benefits to be in a slave class. In the heartland, it's closer to $7.25. But the fact of the matter is, some businesses that the Republicans seem to feel that they keep asking themselves, can businesses survive without having a slave class? And since our nation is a capitalistic democracy and is made up of many small businesses, they keep asking, can businesses survive without having a slave class? And everything that the Republican Party has been positioning for over the past four decades says they believe many businesses couldn't survive without a slave class. I don't believe that. And what does the right to life really mean? Does right to life and blocking abortions get uh, Republican politicians votes for being more Christian? Or is right to life just the fastest way for the Republican Party to increase and maintain a slave class that they think is needed for the businesses? And is that their real right to life strategy? That is, staying in power by using Christians protect the fetus objectives when they couldn't care less about the fetus. They only care about getting votes and campaign money from both businesses and Christians. These are all sinister positions to take. And maybe think tanks that don't have any ethical or moral standards might think them up, and the Republicans seem to have been using them for the last four, four decades. I bring up Heather Cox Richardson, who is a professor of history who maintains a daily blog and video uh, chat Facebook channel because she's provided some perspective for me that got me through very frustrating several years uh, under Republican and Trump hatred campaigns. She basically provides historical links 
to most of the comments that she makes so that you can understand and believe her as giving you a truthful uh, historical perspective. Her link to her Facebook uh, blog and page is www.facebook.com slash Heather Cox Richardson, all one word. Basically, the bottom line here is our democracy will thrive if both parties govern and no one obstructs. So in summary, for our capitalistic democracy to, uh, to thrive, businesses and the people must coexist in harmony. Both parties must govern and not obstruct. Uh, businesses and the right need to accept the 28% tax to fund the Build Back Better legislation that the Democrats have uh, developed and are pushing. And basically to improve our nation's infrastructure and improve our people's lives. Businesses will still get $1.2 trillion over four years, more than they got before the 2017 Tax Reduction Act was put in place. And our country and its people will get $0.9 trillion over four years, more than they got from the 2017 legislation. So basically, I hope this gives you a, uh, a thought, a set of thoughts that can very well get us out of our polarized position that we're currently in. Thank you.